Sri Lanka, followed by Poland. Sri Lanka, please. <laughs> and thank you very much for giving me the floor to make this very brief intervention on behalf of my delegation. Mr. Chairman, it has been accepted without DIMA that responsible state behavior requires cooperation with other nations to address shared cybersecurity challenges. No doubt international collaboration can lead to the development of norms and agreements that promote a safe and secure cyberspace environment for everyone. Be that as it may, member states must be obliged uh, to collaborate with other nations to share best practices, intelligence, and strategies for addressing violations effectively on a global scale. How do we do it? Uh, if you just take the example, uh, while combating the abuse of free speech in cyberspace, it is crucial uh, that uh, uh, it is crucial for responsible states to strike a balance between the freedom of expression, protect the right to express opinions, and engage in open debates is essential. But it should not be used as a cover for promoting hate, inciting violence, or targeting vulnerable communities. To achieve this objective, Sri Lanka has acknowledged the 11 voluntary non-binding norms of the United Nations, which reflects the expectations that the broader international community has of each state and regional organization. Sri Lanka CERT has included these 11 norms in the National Cybersecurity Strategy for 24-29 as one thrust area to show commitment of adhering to the rules, norms, and principles of responsible state behavior. Another aspect is the need to bridge the trust deficit in technology, which is a fundamental aspect of building confidence in an interconnected, digitalized world. Now, in the absence of an internationally legally binding instrument that governs the digital space, the development of rules, norms, and principles of responsible state behavior will surely have the potential, I say, for such norms to be observed in the breach and interpreted at the whims and fancies of the parties. Now, Mr. Chairman, this is very much work in progress, <clears throat> and there is no one-size-fit-for-all. Communication, transparency, and ready information sharing regarding national views on specific norms, rules, and principles is the way forward. Now, such open discussions should aim at developing a joint understanding of these norms and at protecting international peace and security. Interstate exchange and the sharing of best practices implementing the misuse of ICTs should be encouraged. However, while development of rules and norms and principles of responsible behavior in this sector may be a positive step, Sri Lanka's position has remained steadfast that it cannot be a replacement to working towards a legally binding instrument. So now this must be pursued, we say, with the same vigor as we attribute to other aspects of regulating the use or preventing the misuse of information and communication technology sphere. Imposition of obligations and violations that may be adjudicated upon is an important internationally as well as domestically. So in conclusion, with the adoption of the Data Protection Act in 22 in Sri Lanka and the Cyber Security Bill being in the final stages of its process, Sri Lanka is focusing on creating a rules-based order and setting minimum base standards to protect our digital infrastructure and cyber use and engagement. In doing so, we are also protecting the freedoms of expression, innovation, and development in this field. The national information and cyber security strategy is to be updated to accommodate new developments. Now, in this regard, as a starting point, I say, regional partnerships can widen understanding and become trust-building measures. ICT policy dialogue and research with partner countries may be, I say, the way to build effective partnerships and collaboration between industry professionals and policymakers. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador of Sri Lanka, for your statement.